Look at the data. You're not looking at any data. You're, you're, you're carrying the water for the gun lobby. Look at the data. More guns lead to more deaths. Good. States that have open carry laws have more deaths. States that have open carry laws have more deaths. You just watched a snippet of a screaming match that took place between middle school principal turned congressman Jamal Bowman and Republican Thomas Massey, who over the course of his career took thousands upon thousands of dollars, either directly or indirectly from the gun industry. Now, the reason why this took place to begin with is because Jamal Bowman was basically shaming his Republican colleagues as they walked by because they refused to do anything in the aftermath of another deadly mass shooting. He tweeted out, Republicans won't do shit when it comes to gun violence, but try to tell me to calm down. No, we can't calm down. People are dying every day while we wait. And he is absolutely correct. If ever there was a time to be angry, now is the time. So let's watch the full exchange. Ask them, and then go to the Senate, ask the same questions. They're cowards. They're all cowards. They won't do anything to save the lives of our children at all. Cowards. Pressure them. Force them to respond to the question, why the hell will you do anything to save America's children? And let them explain that all the way up until election day of 2024. Let them explain it all the way up to election day of 2024. They're freaking cowards. They're gutless. They're not here. I'm talking about gun violence. I'm talking about gun violence. Oh Carry guns? You think Would you more guns sponsors? lead to more death? More guns lead to more death. Look at the data. You're not looking at any data. You're, you're, you're carrying the water for the gun lobby. Look at the data. More guns lead to more deaths. Good. States that have open carry laws have more death. States that have open carry laws have more death. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That, that's a, what, calm down, children are dying. Nine-year-old children. The, the solution is not harming teachers. Have you ever worked in a school? 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 It's a yes or no question. Have you ever worked in a school? You will not answer my question. Don't stop and talk to me. Okay, I'll bring it down and down. All right, folks. Have you ever worked in the school? I've got a bill. I worked in the school for 20 years. I was a team. I was screaming before you came and interrupted me. I worked in the school for 20 years. I worked in the school 20 years. I was a teacher. I was a school counselor. I was a middle school principal. I was in cafeteria protecting kids every day of my career. He can't even answer a yes or no question. Ask them, why won't they pass legislation? Why? Ask them this question. Ask them right now. Make them answer. That right there is how it's done. We would be in a much better position as a country if more Democrats actually had the courage to do what Jamal Bowman just did there. And you can see throughout the video, Steny Hoyer was putting his hand on Jamal Bowman's arm and I'm assuming he was trying to get him to calm down or stop. But this is the problem with the establishment of the Democratic Party. They're cowards. They're gutless. They lack spines. And so whenever they see somebody actually doing something, justifiably being angry at his GOP colleagues, their first liberal instinct is to cower in fear and think about the political ramifications of this. Oh, my God, how will this backfire? Fuck off, Steny Hoyer. What he's doing there is what you should have been doing for decades now. Now, Thomas Massey responded after this went viral on Twitter, uh, saying he wanted to discuss solutions to school shootings. But when I offered a solution, he began shouting. When he asked for data, I gave him data. But then he just shouted more. Bring facts. There's never been a school shooting in the hundreds of schools that allow staff to carry. Now, that is demonstrably untrue because people quickly pointed out, like Matt Bender, one of the most infamous instances of the very thing you say never happened was at Parkland, where the armed school officer officer was too scared to engage with the shooter, even though he had a gun himself. Yeah. So he is paid to feign ignorance on this particular issue. And there's a reason why the pseudo solutions that Republicans propose always 
involve increasing the number of guns that we have. Why? Because they're in the pockets of the gun industry. And their only goal is to increase the profits of their donors. So you don't increase their profits by taking guns away. You increase the profits by adding more guns. So it's a thinly veiled attempt to placate their constituents who are frustrated with them. But it's bullshit and everyone sees through it. And it's not rocket science. It's obvious that more guns equal more gun deaths. But that's not me just saying it. That's me reciting the data that's out there. So in a meta-analysis from the Rockefeller Institute, they explain research shows that greater availability of guns throughout local neighborhoods in cities like Detroit and Newark corresponds to higher rates of firearm deaths, especially in communities suffering from concentrated economic disadvantage. And across cities, legal access to guns via federally licensed dealers and the availability of stolen guns result in higher firearm homicide rates. At the county level, more access to guns within and in surrounding counties equates to more gun deaths. Across states, researchers found that more guns equal more gun deaths, looking at all 50 states in the country, from 1981 to 2010. This finding has been replicated in numerous other studies. Importantly, states with both lax gun laws and greater access to guns have higher rates of mass shootings. It may be no surprise that this all holds true just from state to state, but from country to country where guns are more available, there are more homicides compared to other high income countries. The firearm homicide rate in the U.S. is 25 times higher and the firearm suicide rate is eight times higher than any other country. For 15 to 24 year olds, the gun homicide rate in the U.S. is almost 50 times higher than other peer countries. The U.S. also has the highest firearm suicide rate of any country in the world, while its rate of firearm murders rank roughly 30th in the world, exceeded almost exclusively by countries in South America, ravaged by relentless drug wars. Drug wars that we created, by the way, in this country. But as Jamal Bowman was correctly saying, more guns equal more gun deaths. And as you can see by this chart, since the U.S. has more guns than people, well, it has more gun violence than all of its peers. This isn't rocket science, as I was saying. We don't have to pretend like we don't know why this happens regularly. Now, with that being said, I am not opposed to gun ownership. I am not in support of gun confiscation. What I am proposing is common sense regulations that are supported by the overwhelming majority of the American population that will indeed make a difference. Okay? There have been countries like Canada, like Australia, that have implemented waiting periods, universal background checks. Australia had a gun buyback program. There are things that you can do to reduce the number of guns in circulation. And if you do that, if you make an effort, you can limit gun violence while not eliminating gun ownership. But these Republicans, they don't want to do that because even if less guns lead to less gun violence, less guns leads to less profits for their donors. So that's what this is all about. And they can try to obfuscate. They can try to lie to everyone and, and pretend as if they're the ones with facts. But everyone knows at this point that they're just sellouts. They're bought and paid for by the gun industry, period, end of story. But unfortunately for these Republicans, most people know that they're full of shit. And in the state of Tennessee, as I record this, hundreds of protesters marched to Tennessee's capital, the state where the last major shooting took place, and they're demanding gun control so kids can feel protected in schools. And some young people even disrupted the legislative session to demand that they take action, which right-wingers are, of course, calling an insurrection because, <laughs> yeah. Zero difference between nonviolent civil disobedience and violent civil disobedience to stage a coup. No difference there. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what these right-wing propagandists say and Republican politicians say. Most people understand that it's their lack of action that has led to this situation where kids have to be afraid to go to school and parents have to be afraid to send their kids to school. So they can try to lie and obfuscate and deflect and find some other scapegoats. But at the end of the day, everyone knows that it's their inaction that's causing this. And Jamal Bowman is right to call them out.